<laughs> so, uh, welcome back with me and Callan, Base Nation Podcast. Anyway, we were talking about a subject that we kind of we wanted to talk about, but he doesn't really know. I have some things pulled up here on my computer that we're going to talk about some topics, a bunch of topics. Uh, but anyway, I'm just scrolling and I've just seen something pretty interesting, and I wanted to get Callan's take on it, and we could talk about it a little bit. Uh, so, I'm looking through, like. You know, when bass player, like the bass player magazines or the bass player, like the publishing things or whoever writes articles on bass players or whatever. I don't, I don't know how many bass magazines there are. But anyway, they did like articles on like young basses. And I see this like young 10 year old basses named Ellen. I don't even know if you know. It's a girl. You oh, know, yeah. you, you know. You yeah, know. OK. Yeah. OK. And I think they've done something like with Aaron um, to Aaron Holdick. I think his name is um, he's a lot older now, but he, before he was like five or <laughs> something. I can't even remember how old he was. Anyway, so super, super young bass players like this girl here. Um, she's 10 years old now, I believe, but I think I've seen her before. How do you feel about how young these players? No, I, I shouldn't even say how young they are, how young and how crazily talented or skilled they are. And I know I have my thoughts, but yeah. I just wanted to hear. I, I scrolled on it. And I was like, okay, that seems pretty interesting. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, I, I, I mean, and the thing is, like, it's been going on for years, oh, right? Yeah, like yeah. for it, ever since the internet has existed, you see videos of of young kids who can just shred, and it's it hasn't gotten old. Like I'm never at a point <laughs> where it's like, oh yeah, you know. Like every time I see it, it it, it freaks me out. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I the, it, like it does. It, it makes it kind of makes you mad and like motivated at the same time. I guess you can say. Like I know with me, it's yeah. just like I. I'm like, how? Like I, I mean, I understand. You know, I guess you could say biologically or physiologically. Like younger kids are more of a sponge than you know at an older age. Um, I get that they take in more information, they can absorb more, especially if they're brand new to it. Um, and I get I totally get the whole premise behind, you know, just engulfing yourself in something and being able to just retain. But at such a young age, I just wish like <laughs> when I see them, I'm like, yo, this is this is absolutely nuts, because if I was playing like that at that age, you couldn't say anything to me like I would be absolutely annoying and arrogant like, like I, I would be the worst but yeah they're, they're, they're like playing circles around cats that I know that are you know my age and I'm looking at it like man this is so super inspiring and then on top of that the other side of it I think about why hey guys real quick sorry to interrupt but I had to mention this if you're serious only if you're serious about taking your bass playing to the next level I get tons of questions all the time Derek do you have programs do you have lessons do you have a course Absolutely. We have everything you need at Base Nation Academy. We have courses, we have live classes, you have more direct access to me um, to be able to answer your questions and get feedback. We have a video Q&A section. It's a ton of stuff. Check it out for yourself. Link is going to be in the description. Anyway, had to mention that. Check you guys later. I think why does it happen more frequently? Like before we had those prodigies before, every, every once in a while you'll see, you know, those prodigies come up um, super young, four or five, six years old. Uh, but I think about why, like, why is it happening even more now a days than before? And the first thing I can think about is more social media age, right? You see it more, right? Before you couldn't really see unless it became a huge big story or they became on, they came on some talk show or something like that. You know what I mean? Like they were discovered right. some weird way <clears throat> or, you know, uh, I'm trying to like America's funniest home videos. I think I, I, I'm telling my age yeah. when I'm, <laughs> when I'm talking about that. But yeah, it was like crazy clips and they kind of get discovered. But I think about that social media wise that we know about them. The other side of it is I think social media on top of that, like YouTube, how they're able to learn and retain all of the information they have at their fingertips. Right. Everybody has courses. Uh, everybody has tutorial videos, you know, so they can it, they can absorb more. They can look at more. They can uh, research more. They can see more. They can uh, see visually see all of the greats play. You know, there's clips on YouTube of every single not just listening to the album, but now actually visually seeing, you know, the actual movement physically of someone playing the bass. And I think it just 
and like you said, it's not new. It's nothing new. It's been happening a lot. But nowadays, I think it's a lot easier to do it. Uh, you have a lot more resources, not knocking anybody or not knocking all you know the kids that can do it because it's still a crazy task to be able to achieve that um, at that young age. But how do you how do you feel about the accessible or this accessibility, I should say, of information with younger players? Like, I I think it's I think there's two sides to it. But what do, what do you think about the accessibility of information education to younger players nowadays and what it's doing to the musician community? I guess you could say. Yeah, I something that Victor Wooten said that I kind of was really thinking about for a long time was talking about like back then listening to records uh, mm. and you know, that was your only way to listen to music. Right. Right. And if you wanted to learn a part, then you go back and, and you know, over and over, you're just literally wearing out the record 100%, 100%. in order to learn it, 100%. slowing it down. But then when you slow it down, you lose the pitch, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, right. like there's so many aspects of like, you were just super active listening. Yeah. And really having to dig deep. And now you don't really need to do that. I mean, you hit the back button on a keyboard a couple of times and then you got it. <laughs> exactly. You know? exactly. And so what what are we now doing to make up for that? Right. Maybe not studying the record as much as the people who came before us. Uh, and, you know, I, I do like I mean, I, I'm where I am because of YouTube, because mm. of your academy because of yeah. you know a ton of different resources i needed that and that's what made me the player i am today yeah but at the same time you know i don't i don't know what i'm sacrificing there are probably records that i i would have dug even deeper into and discovered more things about that would have influenced me differently right yeah there's there's different like i said there's different sides man it's like it's a huge plus if you know you're using that as a helpful tool and i talk about this a lot too um, <clears throat> because you have certain influencers now, like I hate to say that word that has with my name in it. I hate the word <laughs> the association, but I have to call it what it is. Like I influenced and, and I'm totally aware influence a either generation or a certain group of people or a certain group of kids or a certain group of players, whatever the case may be through social media. And, and, and I would say one of the downsides to that is I think a lot of people gravitate towards the one person and they try to learn from the one person and not understanding how many other flavors there are out there, not understanding that that person got that from got their playing from somewhere else, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not not understanding that. And, and it's great to have a mentor, man. Could be Like I said, it's 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 like a bittersweet, like positive, negative type of thing, man, when it comes to it, because you have to diversify, diversify yourself, really, even with mentors. I even say I, I say all the time, like, I don't know everything. I would hope you're. I'm not the only person you're learning from because that's not good. Like just to me in the music, in the music community or musician community, I don't think it's good to just learn from one person. Like I just, I don't yeah. because I didn't do that. I didn't learn that way. Uh, my influence was not one person, you know, it's all, it's a, it's just kind of, you know, gathered together from a bunch of different people. So I think sometimes the social media era can cross cause so much of a, power shift of an influence to where people get stuck on one person. And I think that I've seen that throughout my time on social media, which is just the craziest thing. Like, I don't even like, well, let's leave that for another conversation. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just, it's just weird. So there's an upside and downside to it, man. Like I love, like I'm YouTube university all day. Like I'm all for it. Like you can find and, uh, and, and discover so many things, you know, searching the internet and there's so many different, uh, uh, education platforms. There's so many th different things you can learn uh, for free right on YouTube. I mean, hell, like you can, majority of what I teach is on YouTube. I mean, you can go in there and pretty much learn everything that I've taught, um, right. which is crazy to say, <laughs> you know, um, and, and I kind of gave that. It's almost like you giving away all of the information and I didn't get it like that. So it, it's like a I don't know. It's weird, man. I had this conversation with somebody before um, 
It's like, man, you're giving everything away for free. And I was like, yeah, I don't I don't want to keep it to myself. You know, like, what is it? What good is it just doing me? And I know all of this stuff, information of all the stuff throughout the years. I want somebody to be able to learn it. I don't want somebody to go through what I went through. But at the same time, I'm thinking like, wait, do I not want people to go through what I went through? Nothing was wrong with what I went through. I, I like the process of what I went through. What I went through made me who I am right now. So it's like, you know what I mean? You have those two different sides. Right. And I, I, I'm i like, it's like a toss up to me. I don't know. I don't know. I, th- I just think it's an inf- interesting conversation because either way you go, it's a good, but it can draw some negatives too. I mean, I don't know. How, how did you, how, what, did you, what do you think about your process as, as far as learning, you know, and going through not just the YouTube university or, or why you? Um, or, you know, what, what do you think about your process? How important is that versus getting all of your information from one person? Yeah, I'm definitely a, a YU graduate. <laughs> right. And, and, st- <laughs> and still student. Why you? Um, but, but yeah, you know, it's difficult. And we talked about this before, but I mean, practice, practicing kind of sucks, you know, like yeah. it, it takes a long time to get to a level that you know at least that i would feel confident Mm -hmm. you know playing a a new passage or you know working on a new scale and getting it across the neck and feeling really comfortable i mean that right process takes months and months and months and months and you know i there are a lot of people online on youtube who are like let's speed up this process let's make this as easy as possible Mm. and you know let's let's cut out all the time you know let's let's just play pentatonics let's let's not go so deep and then you can play like this Right. And that I've always kind of struggled with because, you know, it's like what you're saying. You don't want, I don't want anyone to cut corners if they, mm, yes. you know, if someone, if I, and I've had students before where I'm like, like, yes, you can get away with playing the pentatonic scale most of the time. <laughs> right. Like you can totally get away. And it sounds good on bass. Like right. some guitars play pentatonic stuff and you're like, all right, dude, like I, <laughs> yeah, I know, but you can get away I mean, with it on bass. On bass, it sounds so good. Like it right. just really works in that frequency where it always feels pretty good mm-hmm. if you do it right. But <laughs> like and we've heard it, we've heard it go wrong many, many times. But, oh yeah. But generally. Yeah. But generally. And you know, there but there's so much more to music. There's so much more to bass playing. There's so much more to the learning experience. Yeah. Than just one concept. Yeah. And it's funny, man. Like like you said, you made such a good point. It's like that process of going through and, and and what people kind of portray online. And I've seen it. I've seen it, You see it all the time. Like it's like a lot of clickbait stuff. Hell, I've done it the same thing, you know, uh, five yeah. easy steps to do blah, 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 whatever. I mean, I'm, to some extent, a lot of it is BS, like, right, because you still have to go through the process. You know, you're learning, you're hearing that statement from somebody who has done it. You know, you're hearing that statement from somebody who has spent years perfecting their craft and saying, hey, this is I'm going to show you this easy hack or strategy to do whatever. Like, I, I hate portraying that or, or, or making it seem like it's going to be a simple, easy role because it's and the fact that it's not simple and easy doesn't make it bad or good. I think the process or the level of difficulty or, you know, the journey of it as a whole, I think it's a good thing. You know, because I enjoyed it. Like I said, I practiced for hours because I wanted to. You know what I mean? I I went yeah. through the whole thing. I mean, practicing does suck, but I didn't alter my well, I altered my practice as if it wasn't practice. I just love to play. So I was playing songs, looping stuff over and over again, trying to learn different things. I just love playing. So it's like, yeah, like you can't sell sell the dream, but at the same time, you want to sell the dream because of where you are in your playing, you know, exactly. how, how it makes you feel and, and the, the level of playing that you've gotten to and what it's been able to do for you um, as a musician or as a bassist um, up until this point. And I want everybody to feel that. But you I have to understand you have to go through that process um, and then going like like, you know, trying to bring it back home, going back to the younger bass players. I just hope they don't lose sight of that process because they get so good so quick. You know what I mean? It's like, I just, I just, I hope that isn't lost for them. You know, the younger they are. I mean, I I was, I was actually pretty young playing. I played, I started playing. I was like, I got my first bass when I was like nine or 10. And I think I started seriously, you know, taking it serious, I should say 
uh, like 12, maybe like 11, 12, you know what I mean? I kind of got super, you know, um, what's the word? Uh, addicted, right? <laughs> super, super addicted to the base, you know, around that age. But so I was pretty young too. Uh, but I had a long learning journey and I kind of got cut in half, too. And I thought I was getting too good. Now, I can be a whole nother discussion. Like I, I thought I was like it wasn't that I was too good, but I thought I was. And I, I, I you know, I was we talked about this, you know, for quite some time. I hate to do my own horn, but I was I was pretty advanced for my age. And I, I, I completely understood that. Yeah. But I got knocked down super quick to know. Hold on. Wait, you haven't been anywhere. You haven't heard a lot of people. They're going to run circles around you. Kids that are like years younger than you, like we're seeing now, with these kids. Now, huge shout out. Actually, I forgot to even do that. Huge shout out to Ellen. Um, not even going to say the last name. I'll put them up. Try to put them up on the screen. I'll link them down below. Uh, <laughs> Ellen and uh, like guys like Aaron, which is he's a total monster. Um, I don't even understand him, but he can be a whole nother discussion, too. Uh, yeah, he's. Aaron is, anyway, um, <laughs> Aaron is, it's absolutely crazy. He's like an older man trapped in a little kid's body. Like yeah. he is, he is absolutely I, ridiculous, man. Absolutely. I remember ridiculous. seeing him. It was, uh, Richard Bona at the Mark Bass booth at Nam a few years ago. And I mean, he was like, Aaron was really young at the time. I mean, this was like 2018 or something. Dude, it's, and it's so crazy. I, I I was I think I met him not too long ago. I think I did. I, yeah, I met him at one of the Nam shows, and uh, mm. it was so funny because he was so young. You remember the challenges that we used to do, uh, that we used to do the funk funk yeah. challenges. He I think he he might have done one or something. I can't remember, but yeah. like we kind of connected online that way, and it was so crazy. Like he barely spoke English, but like he was always interacting with a lot. Like it was so crazy how quick he you know, kind of evolved in the music community. And then he plays like he's seasoned. Not on, see, see, that's a whole nother thing. That could be a whole nother discussion. Well, we're on a discussion of young players. Aaron plays like he's like been here before. <laughs> like, yeah, he literally plays like he had a couple lifetimes here. So it's not only the skillfulness yeah. that impresses me, right? It's, it's, how you use it it's, it's like where your placement is and how your feel and how your groove is and it was the funniest thing even seeing him younger he he like he really felt it he's you know in. so yeah some of them yeah. some of those kids are super like robotic that are really good and they just kind of go going on going against the motions whatever you which you can tell this dude was like really feeling it and that's what just that what Im, that's what impressed me like he didn't have to have super fast skills or um he didn't have to be able to play Donna Lee back and forth, backwards and forwards. It didn't matter to me. But the feel that he had was just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, he's another one that makes me mad. Uh, but yeah, anyway, huge shout out to to those. I just wanted to mention them and uh, really quick since we're talking about them. Uh, but yeah, this this thing with these younger cats, these I'm just scared for the future. This is just going to come out the womb ready to <laughs> ready to play well, so, so that's the other thing is do you think that that parents mm, you think that there's a parental mm, i mean this is where we're going to get controversial let's talk about but it. is there a parental pressure is there like did they just put a base into into a baby's hands like let's go <laughs> little baby you, know? you know what i, I it, the thing is it has to come from somewhere like Okay, say yeah. if, say if, say if, for instance, say if the kid is interested, like, oh man, dad, mom, I want to play bass. They can't go get it, right? They they can't go purchase it or buy it, especially if they're five, six years old, whatever. So, it, in some degree, some level, you know, the parent has to have responsibility for that. Um, it had to be open as well. I know, I know, with specifically with Aaron, I know his brother was very involved a lot. Um, you know, like recording him and, you know, being able to make sure he was seen and he plays as well. Aaron's brother, he, I think he plays drums or keys or something. I can't remember exactly. But yeah, having people that are around you that are involved as well, as far as the parents too, they have to be super, super supportive. Like, you know, this kid is going traveling places, you know, playing shows and playing clinics and stuff like that. I'm like, you know, so the parents have to be or whoever's, you know, the guardian or whatever 
have to be okay or have to be super supportive. Like, yes, they literally have to put the bass in their hands. And and that's a great subject, man, because what if you don't have that? What if you didn't have that side? You know, and I think about my own personal story. Like, what if my father didn't give me the money to go grab a bass by myself, by the way, I should add, in a music store. I was nine years old. He just gave me some cash and said, go get whatever you can get for that amount of cash, which is the craziest and thing And you ever. picked out a, a Stein burger. I picked yeah. out a Stein burger, man. Hold on, wait, is this burger or bird? Yeah, burger, right? Stein burger. I thought it was burger. I got yeah, right. Yeah, Stein burger, man. It's been so long. I can't remember. But yeah, black Stein burger, man, I think it was cold. It was it was clean, man. I, I can't. It, I I didn't know how to play it, but that's what I you know like. Hey, whatever. It sat up and uh, collected dust for a while, and I didn't really play it immediately. But after a while, yeah, I got some used to it. So yeah, I think about my own story. You know, my dad had to be supportive. He's a musician himself. That helped as well. You know, with a family band on top of that, so that helped as well. Playing in church, you know, everybody else, my brother played drums, everybody, that helped as well. So that's a great element to it because there could be some cats out there that haven't been discovered because they don't have the support. There could be some cats that have right. out there that have some potential that haven't been pushed only because of what they're, you know, what, what they have access to. Um, so that's a great, that's a great, that is an absolutely great point. That's a great point, man, that those parents play a huge role in these prodigies. Like even the guys piano got, you know, kids playing piano and all like they have, the parents got to take them, either push them to make their craft better, go take lessons, pay for lessons. Kids don't have a job. So, (laughs) but yeah, so it's a a lot riding on the, on the parents as well. And huge shout out to those parents. Um, and I think I think we saw Ellen before. I think we maybe the last was she at Nam? Was it? Probably. She yeah. might she might have been there. And if I'm not mistaken, I thought I saw her dad, her father, with her. So I mean, that's a hope. That's another. You know what I mean? That's another example. Like, yeah, you have to be. Kids not going to Nam. You know about? <laughs> you know about him as a player? Her dad? What her dad? No, no, no. I don't know too much. What 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 about it? He. Uh... Man, there was some project, there was some trio maybe uh, with Victor Wooten, him, and uh, it's a drummer, but it's metal. Like, really? Hardcore, like really heavy metal. Really? I uh, it's called that. like Octa, is it Octavision, something like that. We could, we'll oh, wow. pull up a clip or something. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It's intense, and they have like one or two songs out, but it's like, you know, eight minute long epic pieces wow. and the dad can play i mean he can he's I, like I be, I crazy believe, i believe it man it just makes sense right it just makes sense like i said yeah. it's a whole nother that's another example man i had no idea that's that's crazy i had no idea um but yeah it has to come from somewhere man so the background either has something to do with it the parents are super heavily invested or involved with music or the music industry yeah. um so yeah that that adds another level of of uh of benefit that maybe someone else doesn't have. And like I said, there may be a kid out there that can't, you know, um, their parents may not be able to afford or, or bass or whatever instrument they need, or, you know, they really want to play and they can turn out to be this amazing player. So yeah, that's, 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 yeah, that's, that's, that goes deep, man. That definitely goes deep. So, um, wow. Yeah. Even, even parents that I, when I taught, when I used to teach at a music store, it was like half school, music school, have. Uh, music store and I taught there and the parents were the drivers I had a lot of kids right I I had some adults too but I had a lot of kids that come in like Saturday mornings Um, but the parents were the drivers of that and my problem with that is this can be a whole nother conversation my problem with that is some of the parents were pushing their kids to this certain instrument and not saying that the kid wasn't interested musically in anything but they were pushing them Oh, I used to play bass guitar back in the day. I want my child to, you know, follow my footsteps or, and child has no interest at all. And they want to play drums. <laughs> you know, they, they want to, they want yeah. to play keys or guitar. They want to shred, you know? Um, and I had a lot of students like that, unfortunately. And I had to have conversations with some of the parents say, you know, he might not be cut out, you know, to play this. Cause I can just see it in their face. Like they just, they, they didn't want to, you know what I mean? Kids, they, they, they don't hide, hide anything. You know, um, and you can tell and, and from teaching from those many years, like from teaching, I can definitely tell who had passion with it and who didn't. Um, mm. So, you know, I didn't want to keep teaching them and kind of almost wasting time. You know, I was just like, hey, we have and there were other instruments there that were available that we taught us like, you know, he might be interested in, you know, drums, talk to, you know, Sean, talk to Seth, talk to whoever. Um, 
at the time I was working there, but, but yeah, might be interested in that. So some of the parents have to be careful about the interest. And I, I understand the formality. I understand the fundamentals as far as getting music lessons and learning an instrument and being disciplined. I get all of that, but you know, if the child is, you know, they have interest towards something else, please, please, please let, like, let them explore that. Let them explore that instead of trying to force them to play something that you want them to play. And, uh, yeah, that's huge, man. That's 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 huge. That can stunt growth. And and I hate I hate seeing that. You know what I mean? I hate seeing that. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, these kids are getting crazier and crazier. Um, I I just I, I can't keep up with them all. I'm sure there's a bunch more. If anybody knows, if you're in the comments, let me let me know. Let me find some more kids uh, to be miserable while watching their videos <laughs> um yeah let it let us know i would love to see more of them um those are like the two that kind of stick out in my head right now i know there's a ton more i know there's um god what is his name schultz yeah justin Ju and justin jamie. i don't know why i want to say julie but justin and jamie him and his sister i mean they're older now they're like i'm sure like late teens maybe early teens i'm not sure they're they're older now but this is way back when justin and this it, it yeah, those those are the kind of kids that make you sick. Um, <laughs> just just crazy. And then again, think look about it, look look at it. The parents, I think their their dad plays bass or drums or something. I, I'm thinking yeah. I think he plays everything. I think their dad yeah. plays a super 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 major contributor of their music and their passion. Man, like you see him everywhere with them, taking them to clinics. Taking, I think I met I met both of them at some um, summit. In, uh, like a musician summit or clinic, something like that in like North Carolina or something. But for the parents to be able to be willing to take their kids to, you know, and just kind of feed the beast, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. they don't just become prodigies, uh, prodigies for no reason or just, you know, super talented and skilled. I mean, they have natural ability, but at the same time, it's being fed. So, you know, you feed the fire, totally. it's going to get bigger, you know? Yeah. I was but, just talking to Jamie a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, I ran into her at something and, but we were, I was talking to her about, you know, just her and her existence. Like, she was born in South Africa. I think the whole family's from wow. South Africa and they made that sacrifice. Like we're going to move to LA as a family wow. that's, and that's crazy, you know, try man. to make this music. And it's just like, but it takes that level of support from the parents, but now they're like household names, you know household. I mean? Every, I mean, yeah, everybody I, has seen them. It's not there. Uh, the, the crazy thing is not like they're not like cute little kids anymore. Like, oh, yeah, you can play like, no, they're like, they, they're, they're the that's it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like no I category see. at all. Like that's that's, you know, literally household yeah. names, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I was like, I was like, who are you playing with now? She's like, oh, I was just got off the road with Dave Cause. And next week I got a gig with Sheila E. And I was like, OK, it, yeah, those are those aren't kid gigs. Right. Those that's are right. That's, gigs, that's, not a, that's not a kid thing, man. That's that's <laughs> that's not a kid thing. So, yeah, they're definitely. And like I said, man, you, you feed the beast enough, man. They're going to grow. They're going to grow. And I, and I love to see their progression yeah. and everything that they're doing. And I've known his sister. I know Jamie. His, her name is Jamie, right? Yeah, yeah, I've known and I've seen Jamie play drums. He was incredible. And then what pissed me off the most is when I saw her play bass. I said, wow. "What the hell?" Like I had no idea. Like it just kind of came from it. It came from nowhere. I was like, How, "When did you play like like?" I know it's ridiculous. Him, Justin too. Like he he's playing every. I, they all piss me off. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah no huge shout out to justin and jamie um yeah like these kids these, and they're not kids anymore we're just using them as an example um but yeah it's, it's crazy no i just want to get your take on that man i think we're uh you know yeah. let's 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 leave the next subject for next time thank you for those who are tuning in if you're watching this please subscribe if you watch this on youtube it might it might be up on youtube I'm not sure if you're in academy you guys already know what to do base nation academy is where it is that's where you need to be if you want to learn to take your bass playing skills to the next level if you're here on youtube go check that out the link is going to be in the description all of that good stuff um anything else man before we get out of here i think we're good i, I got nothing <laughs> got nothing Sounds good to me, man. <laughs> All right. Check you guys in the next one. Peace.